All right, as promised, here we are back at the Copart lot. Got my brother over here helping out as usual. And we're looking at a 2012 Nissan Versa. And against my better judgment, this is one that I'm seriously considering and I'm gonna go ahead and include it in the video. Um, this has undercarriage damage. It's got 87,000 miles. Like I said, it's a 2012. The body is absolutely perfect. Uh, the interior is perfect. I'll show you the damage here in a minute. It took me a minute to even figure out what the damage was. It's so minor. Uh, but apparently, it was enough to total the thing. Now, this is a beautiful little car. I don't know how well the interior is going to come out because it's, uh, it's dark in here. But I mean, this, this is a, just a gorgeous, gorgeous little car. As, as gorgeous as a Nissan Versa can be, I'll say. Uh, I do like these little cars. I think they're great little econo boxes. They really are. Um, unfortunately, the battery's dead. Um, so I cannot start it up or anything like that. But, you know, seriously, just looking around, the car is very clean. Very clean. Uh, I popped the hood. And, of course, like I said, it's got undercarriage damage. Um, let's see if I can even get this here. There we go. There's the engine compartment. And nothing looks out of place under here, right? Everything looks good. Uh, first thing I did was check the oil because undercarriage damage a lot of times means you've got damage to the oil pan. Um, I'm gonna have to unmount this camera here for this one. Transmission pan gasket itself. And that's a real possibility. Unfortunately, there's no transmission dipstick, so we can't check, but right here, uh, you see some leakage right here and look at this bolt this bolt is actually bent hopefully you can see that good and clear but that bolts from the transmission to the frame I believe that is the transmission mount uh, it got scraped up right here as so you can see someone ran over something and we've definitely got some fluid leaking you can see right here the transmission pan is scraped up uh, so it may need a tranny pan. There may be, may be more damage than that that we just can't see. But I'm telling you, this is one of the perks of bringing your GoPro with you. Uh, highly recommend uh, GoPro or some other action camera so that you can get underneath these things and get a real close look so that when you get home, you can review the video and maybe there's something that you couldn't see uh, because you can't climb under these cars, but a GoPro can. So let's move on. All right, here we have another one that I've been interested in, but I have since changed my mind. I think it'd be a great project for somebody, but it's not a project that I feel like taking on. I believe this is a 2013 Hyundai Sonata. A uh, light hit in the front. It's really nothing too major. It's just more of a project that I'm wanting to get into at this time. 96,000 miles. I was hoping to start it up, but just like almost everything here, it's got a dead battery. And if you want to jump start, you have to walk all the way back. You have to ask them. Then you have to walk back here. Then you have to wait for them. Sometimes they don't show up and you got to go back again. So it can be a real pain. And to answer the question that I get from everybody, uh, in fact, one person yesterday called me a pendejo because I don't bring my own booster pack. And you know, I understand a lot of people don't know how Copart works, and that's fine. But when you don't know what you're talking about and you start calling me names, well, that just makes you look like an idiot. Copart does not allow you to bring booster packs, period. You cannot. I brought a booster pack once, and they made me leave. If you bring a booster pack back here, you will be thrown out of the auction. You can be permanently banned from the auction. You're not allowed to jumpstart cars. They have booster packs out here. I know where they are. They're way, way back there. I could go grab one, but if I were to do that again, if they caught me, I would be banned, thrown out from the auction. You can't bring booster packs. You can't jumpstart your own cars. So that is why, uh, this is mainly to the person that called me a pendejo. This is why I don't bring a booster pack to Copart. Um, and then for the rest of you that have been polite about it, you know, that's why. You can't do it. They don't let you. Um, now, moving on from that subject, I saw this in the pictures. didn't look so bad. In person, it looks a little worse than I really want to deal with. Um, down here at the bottom, you can see uh, this is the core support. Um, 
these newer cars, the core support's plastic. Back in the day, it was all metal. Um, but the core support is just totally broken apart, all of it. Um, down here, all the way down here is the core support. This is where the radiator core and the condenser core sits. Um, the upper core support is also damaged beyond repair. This is twisted and bent. Bumper obviously needs replaced. The plastic shields underneath need replaced. This headlight needs replaced. Uh, could I do it? Yeah, this is honestly a very easy fix. Um, I just feel like this one is uh, its just a little more than I want to get into. A little more involved than I would like. Um, first thing I do when I see a wreck in the front end like this, I check the coolant. And this is full, which is good. That means the radiator is at least holding its fluid. Um, but you look in the overflow, you may not even be able to see the overflow is empty. So I'm, I'm certain we've got a cracked radiator. So it's probably going to need a radiator and, and a core, a condenser core, like I was saying. Just, uh, you start adding it up, starts coming into a lot of money. Now you're also going to need a, a hood. Um, you know, so when you start talking about all these body parts and paint and everything, uh, before you know it, it the car is just not worth it, which is probably why it's sitting here salvaged to begin with. So gorgeous car, definitely love it, but I don't think this one's going to be for me. So moving on. All right. So here we are coming up on this Ford Focus that I'm looking at. This is a pure sale. It's 150 bucks right now. Of course, that's going to go up. It's got 159,000 miles. Slight front end damage right here. You can see the bumper is damaged. The headlight is damaged. The hood is damaged. I don't know if this even goes to this car. I don't, I don't think that even went to this car, but the damage isn't significant. We got a little bit of damage to the fender here. Nice looking rims, nice looking tires. Not a big fan of the Ford Focus, particularly, but you know, hey, it's a cheap car. Well, we got damage here too. Broken spoiler and a pretty good sized dent in the trunk. Overall, it's not a bad looking car and you're talking about right now the bid's 150 bucks. Like I said, it's not gonna sell for 150. I can guarantee you that. But uh, hey, if it goes cheap enough, maybe it's worth looking into. Interior looks pretty good, not too bad see if we can find the key to this thing. It's a great little Econo box. It's an 05. I don't know if I said what year it was, but this is an 05, so. Well, it runs pretty rough. It's very rough in the cabin of this car. Like, it's vibrating me. I just heard the AC kick on, so I mean that's a good sign, but goodness. This thing will this thing is just shaking like crazy. Yeah, that's probably not a good sign, right? Let's see if you can see the dashboard there. I don't think you can. There we go. No check engine lights or anything, and I mean it, it does run and goes backwards and goes forwards. Not too bad. Take a look under the hood and see what we got going on here. Your typical little Z Tech coolant looks good. I'm guessing the vibration is probably from a motor mount. Um, not a bad little car, but it's probably something I would stay away from. Climb underneath, and I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but... We've got no leaks, no damage underneath that I can see. It's a big good little car for somebody, but it's not one I'm going to bid on, so feel free to jump on this one. Looks like a good little run and driving car. Moving on. All right, so unexpectedly, we ran up on this old C4 Corvette. Got a little body damage on the front. Uh, this is not one I'm interested in. Um, if it was, you probably wouldn't even see it in this video. But uh, 
eh, you know, typical for this generation, something this old. It's only got 69,000 miles on it though. It's an automatic, eh, whatever. Manual's a lot more fun. Pretty cool little car. I, like I said, I haven't even looked at this one, so I don't know what it's going for. I don't, I don't even know if it's on the for sale lot yet. But, hey, not a bad Corvette, right? Not bad at all. Fresh paint job. She'll look right as rain. There's the lot number in case you guys are interested in checking it out. Um, yeah, let's move on. All right, so here we have another Prius. And I know what you're thinking. This one looks like it's just too far gone, and you may be right. Um, this one is taped shut. This is uh, Oklahoma City Police Department. So this is, I, I can't tell you what happened to it, but it's got evidence tape on it. Black mold warning. That's uh, City Police of Oklahoma. So I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah, you can look at the rim and see it's been side swiped on something. We got dents and scratches and all kinds of stuff here. Uh, this helps. Oklahoma City Police Department impound 5'8 of 18, 136,000 miles. This one's rough. This one is really rough. This is a pure sale. Chances are this one is not going to go for much, um, mainly because of the accident damage and the black mold. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Sam Crack had a pizza car that looked very similar to this. Uh, his was a lot worse, but this is fixable. What's happened is this thing took a nice hit, probably on the lip of this hood or something, that pulled the entire core support up. Now, the core support end over here is good. Core support end over here, I believe, is good. It's the centerpiece that unbolts right here. This needs to be replaced. Uh, as far as the coolers, the radiator, etc., um, it's also been pulled up down here, right here. So that may be something that needs to be completely replaced, or I think that's something that could probably be straightened back out, pounded back out. I think we could straighten that. Um, as far as these like coolers, these radiators, I'm sure one is for the uh, generator, one is for the engine. Um, these probably need to be replaced. In fact, I'm going to say they definitely need to be replaced, but I'll bet it would drive home. Um, you can look under here and you can see, hopefully you can see, that there is still plenty of coolant in the system. Um, this is an accident that can be fixed. Uh, broken windshield, pretty good right there. I probably should not open this. Um, I'm allergic, highly allergic to mold but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Here's the keys to it. The listing said it has no keys. Oh, wow. Ugh. Okay, this car is bad. So, here's what happened. I can tell you this already. This car was underwater. This is, uh, this is, this is in the water. Yeah, we got dirt, sand, the water line is up past the speakers. Yeah, this car was underwater. Look at this. Look at the mud. You can see the seat is pretty clean up here, but starting about right here, it gets dirty. So we've got a water line of up to here. That's high. That's, that's real high. You can see the front end, this is the bumper. Yeah, this thing found its way into a uh, yeah into a lake. So, as much as I was interested in it, um, I am no longer interested in this car. So, feel free to bid away on it, guys. That sucks. That really sucks. Oh well. Moving on. All right. My brother found this Cadillac XLR that we just have to do a video on. I wouldn't have seen it if he hadn't have found it. Ah. Uh, Look at that. Man, this is a beautiful car. I don't think I've ever seen one of these at Copart. Yeah, it 
Yeah, the door is the battery's dead, so you can't get into it with a dead battery. That sucks. Ah. Uh, beautiful car though. Beautiful. Well, here's another Prius. What do you guys think? Is it worth rep repairing? Do you think we could rebuild this? I think so. This is nothing. Nothing. We could rebuild this car. 92,000 miles. Every airbag is blown. Damn, every airbag is blown. This is the Prius V, if I'm not mistaken. This is the big one. Yes, this is the Prius V. I'm just kidding, guys. I, I can't fix this. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not messing with this car. I'm just screwing with you. Moving on. All right, this is not on my watch list. I didn't even see this one. This is an on approval. You know what this is. The Rotary RX-8 with 138,000 miles. That's more miles than most of these cars will ever see on their original engine. The original engines tend to be shot by 90 to 100. So, hey, maybe this one's had a motor replacement. I don't know. Clean car, though. I love the RX-8. I love the amount of power these things put out for such a small engine. I just don't like that the engines don't last very long. <laughs> if you look back here, you can see we got lots of, lots of thick carbon, really thick carbon. But hey, other than that, man, that's a clean little car. I like it. But we are moving on. You guys know what time it is. Pickup truck time. I know I said I wasn't buying anymore, but uh, what do you think? What do you think? A Ford Courier. Come on now. 1980 Ford Courier. Look at this bad boy. Oh, we got to have it, right? We've got to bid on this. Look at it. It's in pristine condition, other than a little bit of rust and a little bit of dirt. There's not even a crack on the dashboard, guys. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. What a cute truck. We should get this. We should get this. We need this. This is what my channel needs, right? Don't you guys think, oh look, someone might have been living back here. Jessica will kill me. My brother says my fiance will kill me if I buy this truck. I think she'll fall in love with it and she will drive this more than she drives the Mustang GT. That's what I think. All right, moving forward. All right, I don't have a lot of time today, which is pretty normal. I have a conference call here in about 20 minutes, so I can't be here long, but this is basically what I call Carnage Corner. This is where you find pretty much the worst of the wrecks. Oh, look at that 350Z. Or is that a 370? It's a 350. All right. Uh, some beautiful cars out here. And some cars that used to be beautiful. This thing had a bad day. And so did the people in it, I would imagine. Wow. Not pleasant. Wow. We got a pick em up truck over here. That's a hard hit, man. Wow. Wow. Goodness. Whew. You know, I just ran into a gentleman that introduced himself. He watches my YouTube channel. I already forgot his name, but if he sees this video, man, shout out to you. Sorry I forgot your name already. Um, he told me that he shows some of this carnage footage to his teenage daughters to uh, let them know, you know, what happens when you get out there and you text and drive and you make stupid decisions. You, know, you drive too fast. You're out on the street being an idiot. It's no joke, man. This can happen to any one of us. And the worst part is, it could be someone else's stupidity that causes us to end up in one of these cars that becomes a death trap. That's, uh, that's scary. It's real scary. 
and uh, alternatively uh, I'm horrible with names I hope you people don't get too offended I'm really sorry I'm just I'm that bad with names um, the one of the managers of this Copart facility came out and uh, was kind of wanting to see what I was doing which is understandable he said there are some people that come out here with video equipment and they run scams on the internet uh, I'm not gonna get into what those scams are because I don't want to give anybody any ideas but he came out and he just wanted to uh, talk to me and figure out who I am what I'm doing and make he basically he's making sure my intentions were good and I, I you know he's a great guy he definitely uh, he, we talked for probably 15 20 minutes out here in the heat so it's really cool of him to you know not only come out here to make sure I wasn't doing anything shady but uh that he came out here and actually took the time to answer a few questions that i had and and talk to me and get to know me a little bit um i told him you know man i love copart i promote copart because i think you can find some amazing deals out here you really can if you know a little bit about cars and you come out here and you look around for yourself and check these vehicles out yourself you can find some really good deals out here you really can and they don't just sell salvage cars. A lot of cars they have out here are green title, clear title vehicles. Plus, like I said before, man, they've got ATVs. They've got trailers. They've got motorcycles. Uh, they've got a slew of these really amazing wrecked cars. You know, I call them the carnage lot because to me that's what it is. Like this is just, uh, these, are, these are bad. These are just you know these are bad these are really bad wrecks but i mean there's so much to do out here um you know if you have no intention of buying a car from copart you know probably shouldn't come out here and bother these people you know it is a business this isn't a place to come out here and just have a good time um but if you're serious about buying a car you're interested in in copart i highly recommend it you guys have seen me buy a ton of cars from this place and I absolutely love it. And now that the manager, one of the managers has come out and you know we've talked and I've gotten to know him and uh, he explained how they list their cars and some lots may not be as good as others. I think Oklahoma City's got an amazing Copart facility because they list their cars very honestly. Um, I can't speak for other cities or other states. I don't know, you know anything about those, but I know that at least out here in Oklahoma City, this Copart lot is legit and they're definitely honest about the way they list cars and i appreciate that you know as someone that tries to make a little bit of money on occasion from buying cars here i appreciate honesty you know whether a car says it runs and drives or you know whatever the case is i, I like to get an idea of what i'm going to be bidding on before i come out and look at it but my biggest piece of advice is if you're going to be looking at buying a car from copart please come to the lot look at the cars in person don't just start bidding online like i've done on several occasions i've gotten lucky but you may not you know so you should definitely come out here and that was his his biggest recommendation too uh, and he's one of the big shots here he said you know definitely come out and look at the things yourself before you go bidding on them and you know you end up with something that may not be what you expected it to be they do their best to list them honestly but he said he sells more than 20,000 cars a year, more than 400 a week. And you know, sometimes it's difficult to be on top of everything. And sometimes a car that ran and drove when it came in six months ago, no longer runs and drives six months later. You know, they do the best they can, but you need to come look at these things for yourself. There's a few new ones over here. We'll get a quick view of these. We're not gonna spend much time on it though, because we got other things going on and I got to get out of here, but some beautiful bikes out here. This one isn't even broken. My brother found his bike. That's the one he wants right there. Somebody laid it over. Gorgeous bikes. All right, here's another one I was interested in. This is another Prius. I think this is an 05 or an 08. I don't remember. Um, this is coming up on the auction block. It's an 05 Prius with 229,000 miles on it. It's got a clear title, which is unusual, right? It's got a clear title. 
It's got the leather interior. The battery's dead. Fluids all look good. Car looks good overall. I'm um, on the inside anyway, but we're gonna get to the outside here in a minute. There's a lot of room in this car. That's very impressive how much room you get in one of these little Priuses. Uh, you know, not a bad looking vehicle at first glance, right? Uh, the problem with this is it's got such severe hail damage. I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. And we've got a, I don't know if you could see up here, my brother pointed this out, I didn't even catch it. But the roof, can you point out where that is right there? I don't know if you guys can see that, but the roof is just caved in over there. It is, it is bad. Uh, this thing has just got severe hail damage, cracked windshield, uh, more hail. Like it's got hail everywhere, guys. A lot of hail, donated vehicle, 230,000 miles. The fluids look good. Uh, hopefully, we can look at this right here, you can see it a lot better. This crunch right here, it's just, I'm not saying it's not a good car. Uh, if you were buying this for yourself or you know your kid or something, hey, this might be a great car. But for what I'm wanting to do with it, uh, I got I got I got to mark this one off the list. I can't uh, I can't use this car. All right. Last but not least, the thumbnail that you guys saw and probably the reason you clicked on this video to begin with. Anybody know what this car is? Anybody? Do you? This is a Porsche Caveman. No, I'm just kidding. This is the Cayman. Of course, they probably call it something different. You know, it's probably a different accent, different sound. I probably said it totally wrong. So for all you car people out there, go ahead and uh, flame away right now. Wow, look, this whole back window shattered. Wow. What a shame. Beautiful car. Well, it used to be a beautiful car, I guess, is what I should say. It's not so beautiful anymore. 2016 model. Look at these wheels. Lots of airbags gone off in this one. Somebody's drink went all over the place. Yeah, what a shame. Beautiful car though. This is the black edition. It is a beautiful car. Ooh, that back window is about to give out. It about collapse when you close it. Whoo! All right, we're not touching this one anymore. I don't want to be responsible for anything. It's gonna go. Probably yeah, it's that somebody's gonna open and close that door and it's gonna be over with. Yeah, All right, one. that concludes this Copart video. Unfortunately, there's one other car that I was looking at that I did not include in the video because I'm very serious about it. But I think I've been outbid and I think I'm about at the end of what I'm willing to bid on it. Um, and I'm also out of time. Uh, otherwise, I would include that video for you guys right now. But uh, like I said, uh, number one, I'm out of time. Got a conference call in 10 minutes. Number two, uh, I didn't show the car because I planned on buying it, but the bids are just going sky high on it right now. So it is what it is. We'll figure something out. Until next time, if you like this content, give this video a big thumbs up. If you think it sucked, give this video a thumbs down. Don't forget to comment down below. I love reading your comments, even though I may not be able to respond to all of them. Stay safe out there. I'll catch you guys soon in the next one.